Okay, I'm about to show you two beautiful gold foil decks featuring art of the Renaissance. On the left, I have the Golden Tarot of the Renaissance, also known as the Estense Tarot. And this is by Giordano Berta and also Joe Dworkin. Okay, on the right, I have Sandro Botticelli. I have his work. But this is also done and modified by Alexandrov Atanasov. Okay, hope I said your name right there. And he's also done a couple of other decks. And uh, he's a really good artist. Although a lot of the work is directly taken from Botticelli's paintings. Some of it he had to improvise a little bit on. That's my understanding anyways. Okay, these are both Los Scarabeo productions. And typical Los Scarabeo tuck boxes. The deck on the left here, the Estense Tarot, I'm particularly fond of. It's one of my favorite decks. It's a very difficult deck to read, however, but the artwork is just absolutely stunning. Well, uh, let's begin. Our first card is the Fool. And you can see the gold accents in both these cards, okay? This is actually uh, from a painting uh, by Botticelli. I'm pretty sure of that. I have an art book on it, but I haven't looked at it lately, but I'm pretty sure that that's part of an actual painting. Here are the backs of the cards, okay? Pretty nice backs, okay? Next, we have the Magician. And a lot of these little people there, I don't even think they're children. I think they're some type of like, oh, medjus or something, maybe, uh, entertainers, but... Uh, that's our magician there. And here we have, I'm pretty sure that's a, I'm pretty sure that's from an actual Botticelli uh, tarot, uh, painting here on the right. Hey, next we have the High Priestess. And on the Botticelli decks, deck, we'll see a lot of Mother Mary figures because there are a lot of religious themes and um and Botticelli's work, a lot of religious figures and things like that. Okay. Okay, Golden Renaissance on the left and Botticelli on the right. And here we have the Empress. Okay. And you can see that gold foil on that Botticelli. Okay, the Emperor. We have the Emperor. We have... Uh, conventional emperor here, pretty much. And I'm not sure if those are children or if they're just little people once again. I'm not quite sure. And here we have a very stately emperor. And I don't know if that's Botticelli's actual work. I think maybe not. I think that uh, uh, Alexandrov, I think he uh, might have created part of that. Okay. And here we have the Hierophant. Okay. We have... Our Hierophant here with a large key and two subjects. And here we have a Hierophant and, uh, well, he looks kind of like a Pope, perhaps. Some of the miners on the uh, Golden Tarot of the Renaissance are quite strange and make very little sense with the rest of the deck, but I'll show you those. We have the lovers here. We have three couples here on the uh, Stence Tarot. On Bonicelli, we have part of a painting from Botticelli and uh, a couple of lovers here. Look at their hair. Look at that gold flashing on their hair. Pretty cool. Okay, our chariot cards. Okay. Pretty nice. Both these chariot cards are, are pretty nice, I think. I think I prefer this one over here over that one, but uh, it's just a very cool chariot card. Okay. We have Justice. Card number eight is Justice. Oh, good Justice cards. Hey, the Hermit. We have a conventional Hermit here with the old time hourglass. And here we have a Hermit here, but he has a book down the corner here where my thumb is. He has a book. And he's holding something in his hand, but I'm not sure what it is. He's a kneeling. I don't think he was... Drawn, redrawn. I think he was part of a painting too. Okay, here we have the the uh, wheel. 
have a conventional wheel here. And if somebody can go me down, somebody down at the bottom, somebody going up, and uh, an animal on top. Okay. And here uh, we have a recreation by um, by Alexandrov. I'm quite sure that's a recreation. Okay. Whoop. Sorry about that. Okay, here we have uh, fortitude and strength. Same difference, but uh, fortitude and strength. Excuse me one second here. I dropped the card. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, we have the hanged man. Oh, now he's the hanged man. Okay. Okay, we have death. Pretty much conventional death here. This is, a lot of these majors were uh, copied from the Greganor uh, tarot, which I've done a video on also. The Greganor uh, has a lot of the same majors, okay, that survived. Also known as Charles VI, incorrectly, but uh, that's what these cards, these majors were, were copied from. Okay, and here we have a Mother Mary figure with a Jesus figure, mourning his death, apparently. Interesting. This stuff was done in the late 1400s, maybe early 1500s, uh, both these decks. Okay, we have Temperance. The Devil, well, we've got kind of a conventional devil over here, kind of sinister looking though. And here we have something from a Greek or Roman um, mythology figure, I think. A very odd uh, devil. I love both these tower cards. I like this one. I like this clean white stone tower. It's really nice looking. And here we have, well, we have people falling out of this one. I prefer this tower, though. Okay, we have our star card coming up. We have a star lady over here. And here we have part of a uh, Botticelli uh, painting. I'm quite sure on that. A bunch of stars added to the trees there. Okay, the moon card. Have pretty much conventional moon here. And here, well, there's the moon, that great big crescent right behind her. And the sun. Now here we have a sun up in the sky here. And here we have a radiant gold sun. Can you see it, the gold foil? I like the way it diffuses down into the uh, bottom third of the card here. I think that's pretty cool. A big gold spot right there and then it's diffusing down into light. Very cool. Hey, Judgment. Uh, the Greganor card here. Uh, of course, <laughs> this tarot is a golden uh, Renaissance tarot, but like I said, they copy a lot of work from Greganor. Okay, and here we have probably a recreation of a judgment there. And finally, the world. Conventional world card, pretty much here. I love that little village down there. It's really neat. Almost looks like there's snow on the uh, roofs. And here we have Venus, uh, the goddess Venus. And uh, this is a very famous, this is one of Botticelli's most famous pieces of art containing the Venus uh, figure. And so that is used for our world card, okay? Very beautiful. Okay, moving on to wands. This is our ace. And there's a lot of like trees and stuff utilized in the Estense Tarot. Uh, representing wands. So it, it's a difficult read. That's what I'm trying to say. And here we have a wand here. Okay. Now this card here on the left is one that perplexes a lot of people. Like why? Why do this? And there's nothing in the guidebook that tells you why this would be. You have a castrated man there lying seemingly content to just have been castrated, but I don't know why. And here are your wands, the two wands of those trees right there. 
Okay, and here we have a lady with the two wands. Okay, so our three, three of wands, one, two, three, and one, two, three. And we have the four, A lot of religious uh, things going on in this deck here. And Bob Chile did a lot of that. Another Mother Mary and Jesus possible figure. I don't know for sure, but that's just my hunch. Okay, and here we have the Five of Wands. And the Six. We have the seven. And the eight. Very odd eight of wands here in the uh, golden tarot of the Renaissance. These branches evidently represent the wands. <clears throat> and here's quite a clever uh, eight of wands card. Okay, the nine. Have a nine of wands. We have a cattle man or farmer maybe here. And here we have a horseman and a beautiful bird. I don't know what kind of bird that is from the profile, but I'm sure it's a beautiful bird. Okay, we're going on to the ten of wands. And our knaves, our knaves of wands. And our knights. Both beautiful cards. Our queens. And our king of wands. See if I can straighten my cards out a little bit here. Uh, I'm working on the edge of a table, so I have to be careful they don't fall off. Uh, when you're working with an iPhone and a small one at that, uh, you're, you're you're talking about a fixed lens, you know, so you have to work around that. Okay, now this is actually the Ace of Cups. It looks like it'd be an Ace of Wands, but it's not. It's an Ace of Cups. There's a cup. And here we have another religious theme here, I think. Not necessarily, but perhaps. Okay, the Two of Cups. I love the faces on these characters here, on the uh, work they've done. There's something that appeals to me about those faces. Okay, here we have the Three of Cups. I think this is actual Botticelli's uh, work out right over here. And the Four. The Five. The Six of Cups. The Seven. The Eight. The Nine. The Ten. Ten of Cups. Well, I don't really see any real families here, but uh, that's our Ten of Cups. And our Knaves. We have a Knave here giving a lady a smooch. It's pretty cool. And a Stately Knave here on the right. 
I don't know about the pink le uh, leotards, though. I guess they wore those in the uh, 14s and 1500s. They wore these, uh, like, stockings types of uh, costumes. Okay, our knights... Because you get a lot of that in the Visconti decks and stuff where you, you see the uh, nobility dressed in the... Sometimes they have a different colored stocking on each leg. They have a red one and a blue one or green or whatever. Okay, our queens. And the king of cups. Hey, we got our pentacles coming up. And a pentacle guy here. Strange face, so I don't know about that guy. And here we have a couple of angels with a pentacle. The two of pentacles. This is a bizarre card. It's like kids with these horns. I don't know. I don't know if I'd like it. Okay, and then we have our Three of Pentacles. And the Four. And the Five. The Six of Pentacles. The Seven. The Eight. Nine. Okay, the Ten of Pentacles. And the Knaves. This Knave over here is really bizarre. A soldier died, and he removed the bones from the armor, apparently. Okay, okay then we have uh, our Knights. They're similar decks in that they're Renaissance style art, but they're completely different animals, really. Okay, our queens. And the kings. Okay. Moving on to swords. Our ace. Our two, <clears throat> our three, she's pulling him by his hair, that's something else, a three of swords, she's pulling him by his hair, well there's the three swords, okay, the four, The five. The six. The seven of swords. And the eight. Oh, look at this. I don't know if, he, if he's aware of that or what. Okay, the Eight of Swords. Man here ready to hang himself, I guess. 
jumping off that log. Okay, here's another bizarre Estens card here on the left. Somebody lost their head. Okay, the nine, the nine of swords. Okay, the ten. I like that lion. Okay, the ten. The knaves. And the knights. And the queens. And wrapping it up, the kings of swords. And there they are. Well, I like both these decks. But uh, let me know in the comments if if you own either of these or you want to get some. I <clears throat> should compare some. They're similar decks, but they're really completely different. Uh, so, you know, I just, uh, I put these projects together just to give me something to do. It's like a hobby of mine, but I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Anyways, well, thanks so much for watching.